Today, we're diving into the mysteries, marvels, and madness that is Sherlock Holmes, Chapter One. Literature is no stranger to adaptations, ranging from film to stage to even video games. Hell, countless classics have been adapted into games, including Dante's Inferno, EA's obvious God of War ripoff. And this time, it looks like everyone's favorite fictional detective, no, not you, Professor Layton, is back to solve crimes on this next generation of consoles. It's time to get elementary, my dear X-Play. <gasps> Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is far from the first Sherlock Holmes video game. Since 2002, developer Frogwares has taken on the intrepid investigator's mantle and has delivered eight different Holmes adventures, ranging from encounters with Jack the Ripper and Arsène Lupin to even adopting a daughter. The Devil's Daughter! But Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, the ninth edition of Frogwares series, is actually the first game chronologically and features the first open world for the detective. But this isn't your lip, Professor Sherlock Holmes. No, this is hot Sherlock Holmes. He's young. He wears just one of his sleeves rolled up because he's kind of a bad boy. Oh yeah, and he's a coroner's bag of mental health issues, including having an imaginary friend-brother companion coincidentally named John. He's single and ready to mingle, around a crime scene, that is. Whoa, what a breathtaking man. Of course, here at the very prestigious X-Play Gamer Labs, we had to conduct our own investigative tests surrounding this Sherlock. Right now, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 sits pretty high on the Hunklock Holmes tier list, with Herlock Sholmes still sitting solely at S tier. Why are all the Sherlocks so hot? Even the animal ones. That's a mystery for another X-Play. But not only is this Sherlock a babe of Baker Street, but he also comes with a customizable wardrobe. You heard that right. You can dress up Sherlock Holmes. Night on the town, Sherlock. Clean cut and ready for combat Joker from Persona 5. Sultry sailor. Abe Lincoln for you history lovers. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. But these outfits serve a purpose outside of just entertainment. Well, all except John's ice cream parlor getup. Sherlock Holmes, outfits, makeup, hats, and yes, facial hair are all pivotal throughout your journey. Some mysteries may have you dressing as a described culprit. Meanwhile, in order to access unique areas or information from locals, you'll have to dress the part. As in, don't dress as a polished Victorian bad boy who looks like he could start his own boy band called the Industrial Revolution. The multifaceted wardrobe system provides a creative and fun tool to the game's overall investigative gameplay, which provides me with a stylish segue into discussing the game's core. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is a refreshing take on the mystery genre. Having played my life's worth of puzzle, investigation, and mystery adventure titles, going into Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, I felt confident about what I was in for. And boy, was I wrong but in the best way. The overarching mystery of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is, well, you. Sherlock is unable to recall his early life on Cordona, and after visiting his mother's grave, there appear to be questions surrounding her death that you do not know the answers to. Questions that lead you all over the island in search of clarity. Alongside John, you are tasked with solving crimes and mysteries in order to unlock more of your memories and the riddles that lie within your past. But Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 does not hold your hand or spoon feed you these mysteries. No, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 pushes you out of the nest and simply yells, good luck! on your way down. As Sherlock, not only do you utilize specific game features to solve mysteries, the Mind Palace, Casebook, Chemical Analysis, Camera, etc., but you must also use your own brain. Yes, I'm talking to you, audience. Yours. Your brain. Quest locations are never marked on the map, so you have to use the power of reading and looking up street names to decipher where you need to go in the game. And the same goes for inspecting police records or exploring the newspaper archive. You have to utilize the context clues from your own casebook in order to find the information you're looking for. While yes, this can sometimes lead to frustrating moments of not knowing where to go next, when you ultimately find that next clue or figure out the next location, you are hit with a sensation so strong you may be yelling, the game is afoot! at your own console. Likewise, the mysteries you take on in this title are not on an unmovable linear track. Many games in the genre, including Phoenix Wright, Professor Layton, and even Nancy Drew, usually feature mysteries you need to solve in one very specific way. In Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, you have the option to accuse more than one suspect, in addition to ultimately making the decision to arrest an individual, in some cases an elephant, or simply let them go. 
The game doesn't correct you if you've made the wrong decision. It simply lets you live with that choice. This makes every deduction that much harder, but also that much more important. As Sherlock, I simply had to trust my gut and go where I thought the evidence was leading me. And this even follows you up to the end of the game. There are four different endings for Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, and none of them are truly good or bad. They are each heartbreaking in their own way and have different impacts on Sherlock's life and outlook, even down to which character narrates them. Each mystery and side quest was unique in its own way, which kept me constantly intrigued with what I was doing. And Sherlock's overly casual crime scene reconstruction reclining stances gave me a good laugh. Okay, Sherlock just casually lay down on the floor of the crime scene. That's definitely a good idea. Overall, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1's greatest triumph is its investigative gameplay. The game treats its players like the intellectual free thinkers they are and provides a variety of paths for a genre that is traditionally one track only. Now, the setting is sadly a different story. This title takes a bold step in game design and puts itself into the sprawling open world of Cordona. But sadly, this endeavor is half-baked, or rather half-lit pipe in the hands of the world's most infamous detective. Cordona features a variety of districts ranging from metropolitan British squares to crowded Mediterranean markets. But across all these districts, there is no real life in Cordona. Yes, there are shops and areas that you can access, including newsstands, furniture stores, and designated quest buildings. But overall, Cordona feels more like a shell than a real city. Nowadays, open world games have evolved into highly detailed experiences. You can play cards at a local inn, explore homes for materials and individuals to assassinate. You can even purchase cheese and pomade at a general store. You get my point. If you're going to create an open world game, you have to fill it with a plethora of experiences, side quests, or locations for the player to explore. Or even just engaging NPCs, which this game lacks as well, to the point where during the first part of the game, I literally heard NPCs doing some weird fake mumbling voiceover than actual speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only good NPC is John. While his hints and feedback, specifically if you're asking too many questions, can be annoying, he's ultimately a fun springboard for Sherlock Holmes' staunch and cynical demeanor. Oh, he's Sherlock grumpy. He'll take on goofy positions in various locations, including swimming in a boathouse to playing the piano, all the while keeping up the creepy Watson tradition of suddenly appearing as you turn around. That is still unsettling. Moreover, you can only fast travel and take carriages to discovered areas on the map. So get ready to run your way across an entire city early on in the game in order to discover all of the fast travel points that you'll rely on later. And when I say run, I truly mean run. One weird plus to this game is that Sherlock Holmes does not have a stamina meter, which means he can just infinitely run and never stop. <laughs> Speaking of unlimited stamina, there is another feature that Sherlock has an unlimited amount of. It's not wit or sex appeal, it's ammo for his gun. In this iteration of Sherlock Holmes, his solution to every combat situation is gun. I'm not kidding. Disarm your enemies with a gun. Take down powerful baddies by removing their armor with a gun. Use the environment around you to get the upper hand in battle with a f***ing gun. Someone call the NRA. I think we just found them a new spokesperson. Look, there's a part of me that does appreciate the disarming and cleverly use your setting aspects of the game, but it just feels very rigid. And when you can only do those actions with a gun and not anything else, at least let me do something with my hands, like in the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock movie. <laughs> Combat is largely repetitive in this game. Every combat sequence is set within a specifically sized square with a very specific multi-shot setup cutscene and NPCs that all shout the same exact phrase over and over. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm coming. This makes combat the least fun and least rewarding part of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, which is disheartening because it's one of the fastest ways to earn money so that you can buy back the auction furniture of your childhood and fill out your closet with outfits like this. All in all, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is a... Wait, 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 my dear Sessler. Now, before we wrap up this review, there is something about this game that has been troubling me all throughout this video. The internet meme references to Skyrim, the fact that 
that Sherlock is hot. The super Hulock undertones. And this painting of Sherlock from the game that is, and I consulted Avali May, anime specialist on this one, very clearly inspired by L from the anime Death Note. By putting all the clues together in my mind palace, I have been able to come to the very conclusion that... Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 was created by a bunch of nerds. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> just as a fellow nerd who also puts geeky Easter eggs into her work, I just wanted to let the developers know that, well, uh, we noticed the stuff and thought it was cool. We good? I'll go back to my producer hole now. Thanks for making Sherlock so hot! <clears throat> Back to the actual review. While there is a lot Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 gets right, ultimately, its hollow open world and lackluster combat leave the game feeling more like a novelette than a sprawling epic. If you are a fan of mystery adventure games and are looking for a new challenge, then I would definitely recommend stepping into the sexy shoes of this young Sherlock Holmes. However, if you're looking for something more, you may not fully find it within the sea splash walls of Cordona. Which is why we're giving Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 a 3 out of 5. And since we're on the topic of Sherlock Holmes, I'd like to present you with a special Sherlock Sessler 7. This is featuring my favorite seven Sherlock Holmes mysteries, in case you actually want to put down the controller and pick up a book for the first time since high school. Number seven. His last bow. This is the final chronological Sherlock Holmes mystery where he, he is engaged with helping the British during World War I. Six, the adventure of the three orange pips. Yes, this story involves the Ku Klux Klan. It's uh, very, very odd, and it definitely looks at America as an exotic hellscape. Number five, the adventure of the golden pince nez. I like this story primarily because, well, the title is a reference to glasses that old people wear. Number four, The Adventure of the Crooked Man. This one's fun because part of the mystery is if there's a mystery. Number three, The Adventure of the Yellow Face. This one actually kind of scared me, and I must say, the ending is not what I expected. Number two, The Red-Headed League. Um, this is a story about a lot of red-headed people, and it's the most bizarre and desperate attempt to commit a crime I've ever heard of. And number one, my absolute favorite, Adventure of the Speckled Band. One of my favorite locked room mysteries. Uh, don't want to say too much. Uh, it definitely is the most exciting of the ones I read. Now there you have it. Literature and gaming in one perfectly wrapped review. Thank you for watching, and be sure to catch X-Play live on Tuesdays and Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you haven't already, check out some of our other videos for more mysteries, including our investigation into why they keep re-releasing Skyrim and a deep dive into the Nancy Drew PC game series. Yes, you heard that right. It goes deep.